Real Talk for Real Teachers. My name is Julie Rupo, and I'm the lead content specialist for Conscious Discipline. I've helped produce many of the products you love and have assisted Dr. Bailey in writing her best-selling books and curriculums for more than 22 years. My husband's a high school teacher and a Conscious Discipline certified instructor, and we have two elementary age daughters who keep us on our toes. Today in Real Talk, we're going to mix things up a bit in order to bring you some insightful information that's also timely. With the holidays fast approaching, the flu season expected to be back in full force, and COVID vaccines being authorized for children ages 5 to 11, we thought it helpful to provide some strategies to ease the stress and anxiety surrounding medical procedures like vaccines. Today's Real Talk will be less of an interview and more of an overview of four steps you can do to help children manage big feelings in the moment, as well as paving the way for a lifetime of emotional and physical wellness. These steps are geared towards parents and guardians, but are also helpful for educators because we all know children's concerns about vaccines are likely to surface during daily classroom chatter. Joining us for today's Real Talk session is Amy Spidell, a current Conscious Discipline Master Instructor and a former SEL coach for a pediatric practice. Amy has coached countless families through everyday challenges as well as those challenges that are particular to doctor's office visits. Let's listen to what she has to say about preparing for successful medical procedures like vaccines, and I'll be back to share more when Amy's done. Hello, my name is Amy Spidell. I'm a master instructor with Conscious Discipline, and I'm here today to talk about vaccines and other medical procedures. So perhaps Conscious Discipline is new to you. Just a short explanation of that. It is a social and emotional framework from which we as adults first are able to draw brain researched strategies and skills in order to regulate ourselves in service of our children learning how to regulate in a more effective way. And that that regulation is based on feeling safe enough and connected enough to actually walk into problem solving in a helpful way, which is why it fits things like vaccines, because how we approach it is going to be how they experience it. So our first job is to know what is my experience around vaccines? What is my experience about medical procedures? And if it brings up a whole lot of anxiety for you, then this is first going to be your job to figure how is it that I'm going to bring this in a way that makes sense to my child and helps them be successful through it. So our awareness of our own heart rate and how we're feeling in that moment are big. So we're just gonna take three deep breaths because this is what you're gonna do before you do anything around vaccines with your child. So take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your lips and just feel your body relax into that. So take a deep breath, relax your body, take a deep breath, Relax your body. And one more deep breath. And relax. I'm going to be sharing four parts on how to have a successful experience around medical procedures. And again, in particular, vaccines. And just so we're clear about what my definition is of success, Success is the best outcome given the circumstance you find yourself in. So <laughs> success can still look messy, but if that's the best that we can do to get through this experience, then yay for us. So that's what we're going to look for. As we think about the four parts to this, the first one is preparation. So how is it that we get ready for a big event? And when you think about some of the things that you've gotten ready for in your life, one of the things we're very well aware of is we have higher anxiety when we don't know what's going to happen. So we sometimes think, we'll just surprise them. We'll just show up, shove them in a room. Hopefully they can do it really fast. It'll be over. And the problem with that is it builds residual um, anxiety and fear for anything that's going to happen. And you're never going to convince them again that they're not going to be getting a shot. So one of the first things that we're going to do is practice what's going to happen. And my personal uh, reflection is that we're going to get rid of the word 
shot because just that word can bring up uh, not only a little anxiety in us, but we can transfer that to them. I actually worked in a pediatric practice, uh, not in the medical profession, but as a parent coach for many, many years. And I talked with a lot of parents who felt like I was just going to get them there. We were going to do this thing. And then it all blew up. And maybe it didn't blow up uh, in the parking lot, though sometimes it did. Maybe it didn't even blow up in the waiting room, though sometimes it did. But by the time they got into the exam room and by the time somebody actually opened the door to say hello, uh, they were under the exam table or cringing to their parent for all they were worth. So how is it that we take some of this away from them? And I'll tell you, I give your uh, pediatricians and all the people that work in the medical profession a lot of kudos for how much they want your child to have a successful experience in this. So we, it's not for lack of wanting that to happen. And they may also have additional strategies for you uh, that I highly recommend you check out. I'm going to give you just a few short ones that I've learned over the years can be successful in a child's life and in yours. So the first one is prepare, prepare for the moment. As much information as you can provide and for uh, our younger children, especially, and it certainly helps for us as adults as well, uh, give them lots of pictures. So again, back to your experience. How many times have you had experiences where you were going to do something that was fairly new, you got some letter in the mail or some email and they gave you so much information. You felt like you knew exactly where to go when you got there. You knew what time you were supposed to show up. You knew what you're supposed to wear. All of the things that said, I can be successful at this. Then have you ever had an experience where you've gotten such little uh, information that you really weren't sure exactly when you were supposed to show up? You weren't sure if you were dressed appropriately. You didn't even know how long it was going to last. So all of those things build anxiety. That's what practice allows us to shift. So as much as you can take pictures of where they're going to go, what it will look like, who they might run into uh, when they're there, uh, if it's your own pra if it's your own medical practice, uh, your own medical place, then you might be able to go ahead of time and really snap some pictures of even who's at the reception desk, all of those things, as much as you can do in that realm. Then what are we going to do when we get into the room? Practice. Sit there, maybe at the kitchen table, and practice. We're going to sit there. They're going to get you ready, and you're you're going to get a vaccine and the vaccine is going to go into your arm and it's going to help your body stay safe. We've gotten them. You're going to get that so that our family can be safe and our bodies can be healthy from germs. It's going to feel a little bit like a pinch and it's good to let them know it feels a little bit like a pinch. Not all vaccines do, but this one pretty much. So a little pinch and then they're going to put a band-aid on it. And what you're going to do is take your hand and hold the band-aid so that that, uh, that that stays safe and on there. And when you hold your arm, it also helps your arm know that you're there to keep it safe. And you know what else helps that you don't need to necessarily mention, but when they're holding some tension on their arm, they don't feel it as much. So that helps them. And you can say to them, you can do it all by yourself or I can help you do it. So we're going to practice both ways just in case you get to decide. And I'm going to be there with you and we're going to be talking while we do it. And uh, maybe we can even come up with a joke uh, that we could tell the person who's going to be doing this. So what are some of the things that you and your child might practice so that when you actually get to the event, you've got a clear picture? What you're going to put at the end of that schedule getting the inoculation is what we're going to do to celebrate that we had this experience and we nailed it. So what's our celebration going to look like? Plan a celebration because it's always nice to know there's something great at the end of this. It isn't the same as a reward. If you're good, then we'll get you something. No, this is a celebration regardless of how messy or, or uh, wonderful it turns out to be. So just a little celebration. It can be, uh, we're going to take a special snack for in the car. Uh, I'll sit in the back seat with you and we'll have our snack if you want, uh, if you want to just, since it's uh, cold in some of the places <laughs> at this time of year, um, it might be a book in the waiting room. What is it that your child might really enjoy doing just to celebrate that this is what they accomplished? Maybe it's going to be taking a selfie and sending it off to someone else in your family. So whatever that is, how are we going to celebrate? That is all step one. How is it that we prepare for this? Then part two. Part two is show up and put the plan in action. 
And when you say, this is the plan, now that we've got this down, we're doing this thing, and your body is prepared, your body knows what to do, let's knock this out of the park. So however you get yourself ready for a, a sporting event or ready for something uh, that is meaningful to you, do it in the same kind of way. This is, this is really a big step and we're going to do it together. That's all that is part of part two. Part three is a little more challenging. Part three is when you get there. So there are two parts to part three. The first one is if they seem apprehensive, maybe in the car, maybe by the time you get to the waiting room, whatever that moment is when they seem apprehensive and they look at you and they say, I don't want to do this. If they're still talking to you and they're still wanting to do this, the first thing you're going to do is take those breaths. Remember, be the guide here. Take those deep breaths. Relax your body so that you know exactly what to do to say to them. Your brain is going to help your body get through this because your brain has practiced this so much that your body knows what to do. So we're going to be able to do it. It's just your body's going, mm, is it really okay? Yes. Tell your body, yes, we've got this. And I'm right here with you. So it's the encouragement part. If, on the other hand, they are hanging onto the doorknob for, for dear life and there's no way that you can get their little fingers off, you know, that kind of dread, that kind of terror that you're seeing in their little body, then you're going to back that train up. You're going to hold them and say, it seems like your body's saying it wants a little bit more information. It wants to be sure. So we're going to be observers. We're going to go in and we're going to watch and we're going to see how it goes. And we're just going to, to find out a little bit more about it so that you can be as comfortable as you possibly can in your body. Because that's going to be important. So that is a hard step because this means that you're going to have to make another appointment and maybe you've already taken off work. I get it. But remember that you're building a history of how this all plays forward for the rest of their lives. And having the information you need to be successful is a big part of that. So what could part four possibly be? Part four is if they catch hold of the fact that not everybody does this. So sometimes it's like, oh, there's a loophole in this plan. And especially considering not everybody does something that doesn't feel so comfortable. So why don't we just do that? You're going to do the same thing you do with all the other things that you've done in your family's life around safety. This is something we've decided for our family to do because it's safe for our family. And this is how we've decided to keep our bodies safe. Just like, and then name some things that you already do. If you wear bike helmets, then just like we wear bike helmets, but not everybody does. Just like we make sure that we eat um, healthy snacks, but sometimes other people make different choices. This, These are the choices that we make for our family because this is what we've decided helps us stay, stay safe and healthy. So it's not about anybody else. It's just about this is how we do it so that we're safe and healthy. So just to kind of hold on to that as your mantra. And do remember, breathe and breathe and breathe some more. Because the more you pay attention to your heart rate and you just keep bringing it down, the more brilliant you're going to be to come up with the ideas that are going to be helpful to you and to your child. And to remember, when all of this is said and done, if you've gotten through this in any way and you're able to celebrate the fact that you got through it and do have that celebration, if that inoculation, if that vaccine, if that procedure actually happened, do celebrate it and say, we were successful. It was hard and we did it. So remember, success is just the best outcome given the circumstances. So I am going to be wishing you well as you walk through this because it is big to be your child's advocate, to walk alongside them, to know that you can be the voice that will be in their head for the rest of their lives around something that they're going to experience many, many times. So let that voice be encouraging. Let that voice be thoughtful. And you've got this. Until uh, perhaps we have another conversation, again, I wish you well. Thank you, Amy, for those helpful strategies. To review, before we even make an appointment, it's helpful to take a look at our own emotions surrounding medical appointments and breathe deeply so we can regulate our own feelings. Then we redefine success as the best possible outcome, knowing that best possible 
can still be quite messy and different from that idyllic picture in our minds. Then we can apply Amy's conscious discipline-based steps. One, prepare by planning and practicing what will happen in order to ease anxiety. Two, put your plan into action. Three, soothe in the moment. And four, manage any loopholes children try to slip through, like when they say, oh, but so-and-so isn't getting a shot. Having just gotten my own girls vaccinated, I will definitely say ours was a messy success. Our doctor's office was jam-packed and ours was an end-of-the-day appointment, so we had an unexpectedly long wait that allowed extra time for anxieties to creep in, no matter how much I spy we played. By the time the nurse arrived with our doses, the kids were bored, impatient, and freaked out, and the adults in the room were just trying to move quickly. It took my husband and I longer than I'd like to admit to refocus ourselves away from the momentary goal of getting the jabs done quickly and back to our long-term goal of creating an emotionally safe experience that will lay the blueprint for future successes. At that point, we slowed it down, refocused on consent and calming, and things went much more smoothly. In the car, we celebrated first, and then we acknowledged our oopses and made a plan for how we would do it differently on the second dose. Like I said, messy. But for us, that was the best possible outcome. Whatever your vaccination choice and plan, we wish you the best possible outcome given the circumstances you find yourselves in. So what have Dr. Bailey and Conscious Discipline been up to? Dr. Bailey just wrapped up our Advanced Institute in Texas. A big shout out to the transformational change happening out West with the largest advanced group in Conscious Disciplines history. You did it. We have one more public event before we close out 2021, and that's the Conscious Discipline for Students with Autism Spectrum Disorders workshop in Orlando, Florida. Dr. Bailey will be headlining that event December 3rd and 4th, and there are still a few seats available. So go to the Professional Development tab on our website to register for that today. Also, our shipping department is upping their protein intake, ramping up their cardio, and squeezing in extra shut-eye now in anticipation of the busy holiday season ahead. So keep us in mind for that hard-to-shop-for peer, the new moms in your circle, students who would delight in Schubert and Sophie books, Jaden superpowers, or Bailey Bear's loving rituals, and of course, yourself. I hope you've enjoyed our time together today. Until next time, I wish you well. For more episodes of Real Talk with Real Teachers by Dr. Becky Bailey, visit ConsciousDiscipline.com forward slash podcasts. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app.